Welcome everyone. My name is Susan Patterson and I am a national leader in the fight against human trafficking. I have spoken to over 100,000 people with regard to the social justice issue and I have trained scores of speakers. Your social justice issue may not be human trafficking. However, the principles I will cover will work for any social justice issue. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge you for having a heart for social justice. You are awesome. If you have very little speaking experience, I highly recommend Toastmasters so you get speaking experience and learn speaking basics. This presentation is an advanced training for people who want to speak on social justice issues. It will help you understand the difference between being a speaker who just provides information or a speaker who's making a real difference in resolving a social justice issue by mobilizing the community to take action. This video series is a short summary of an hour and a half training that I do for speakers. So we will be covering a lot. You may want to pause and take notes. The mission of this YouTube channel, winning the fight against human trafficking and child exploitation is to equip everyone, no matter what their station in life to make a difference in the fight against human trafficking. We offer scores of videos to accomplish that goal. This training video is part one of a three part series on how do you speaking to truly make a positive impact on your issue. It teaches you how to be a professional speaker who keeps their audience engaged. Part two of this training series is the video on how to market yourself as a social justice speaker. Part three goes further into addressing how to motivate groups to take action. Three of the biggest mistakes I see speakers make is one, they criticize people or groups. You will alienate your audience that way. Just focus on your issue and what they can do about it. Two, they overwhelm their audience with the horror of the issue they are talking about. They have stats and story after story of the pain, human trafficking, poverty, racism, etc. causes. That leaves people drained and demoralized. After I created my first presentation on human trafficking, I ran it by my friends and asked for their feedback. What they told me was this, Susan, we got the world of human trafficking in the first two minutes. Then you kept going on and on with example after example. After the first two minutes, all we wanted to know was what can I do? By the time you were done, we just wanted to go binge watch a TV show to avoid the issue. It was just too much. The third biggest mistake I see speakers make is they make general statements like bring what you have and do one thing. People don't know what they have to offer unless you drill all the way down to where they live. You have to provide at least a dozen examples throughout your presentation. Then they begin to understand what bring what you have means. I'll give you three examples now so you understand what I'm referring to. For instance, if you are a member of a church of the PTA, you could have a fair trade table at your church or school fair. For about six hours of work, you could educate hundreds or thousands on what they can do to reduce child labor in the third world. Another example is that over 90% of victims will see a health professional while they are victims. If you brought a training to your clinic or hospital, you could literally save the life of scores of victims. How about this one? If you teach yoga, you could offer to teach yoga to survivors of human trafficking for a nonprofit. Given that human trafficking victims suffer from a higher rate of PTSD than soldiers who have been in war, teaching survivors how to manage stress is one of the keys to their healing. Can you see that these examples leave people with a sense that they can make an impact on the issue with their unique gifts that will really make a difference? If you are a nonprofit and the only thing you tell people they can do is give you money, that is usually a one-time thing for many people and if they can't give you a lot, that makes them feel insignificant. If you let them know about lots of things they can do, it energizes them. 
When people are energized, they tend to give more money than when they feel small and powerless. Now let's address the background for an effective speech. First of all, you want to look at what results do you want to produce. Make sure you have that written out. Based on those goals, design your talk. For instance, if you are speaking to a church and your goal is to have them start a church ministry, then see our presentation on how to create a dynamic anti-human trafficking ministry and incorporate slides from that presentation. If your goal is to have them do more for foster children, then include those actions. I know this may seem obvious, but I've seen too many speakers feel that if they just tell enough horror stories, people will do something. It just doesn't happen that way. People act according to what your talk focuses on. An important thing to keep in mind is that your personal perception of yourself and your audience determines how you come across as a speaker. Some questions to ask yourself are, one, do you really believe we can end human trafficking or the social justice issue that you stand for? If the answer is yes, then you will be positive in the way in which you speak. If you are hopeless regarding seeing any resolution to your issue, you will leave your audience hopeless. Your job as a speaker is to give people hope. Two, how do you view your audience? If you think they're going to resist you, you will be dominating in the way you present, which turns people off versus being and rolling. Three, how do you see your ability as a speaker? Speakers who lack confidence in their ability do not have as much control of the room and tend to go off on tangents. If you lack confidence, just remember, you only need to know more than your audience and you need to practice, practice, practice until you feel confident. For people of faith, the question to ask yourself is, how do you see God in relationship to your calling? Are you relaxed knowing he will take care of everything? Now let's look at the 11 key dynamics that you need to be an effective speaker on social justice issues. One, you need to make sure your talk is relevant to both who your audience is and where in the community they live. For instance, if you are talking to parents, they may find the definition of human trafficking, what the police are doing, etc., interesting. However, they will walk out frustrated if you don't give them what they really want which is how to tell if their children are vulnerable to becoming a victim and what to do about it. Always begin by providing examples of how your social justice issue, whether it's homelessness, human trafficking, etc., is happening where they live. With regard to human sex trafficking, people often think it looks like street prostitution. So if they are in an affluent area, they won't think it is happening in their neighborhood. So let them know this crime is about money and is more likely to happen in affluent areas where victims are literally delivered to the sex buyer's door. If you provide relevant examples, you will have their undivided attention. What if you have an audience with many different types of people? In that case, you could create handouts like a parent handout or one where professionals can get training, etc. I have all those handouts at my website and you can find them at, by going to the link that's in the video description below. Two, tell a few stories to make your point rather than explaining your point. Here is a point. In every picture, there are geotags that show anyone the address of where the picture was taken. Here is a true story. A teenage girl was falling in love with her online boyfriend whom she had been sharing pictures with. Her parents had told her to never tell anyone where she lived, so she did not tell her online boyfriend her exact address. One day while she was home, he called her and said, Babe, I am here. We can finally meet. She was so excited she blew past the alarm going off in her head, reminding her that she had never told him where she lived. When she got to the car, instead of the cute, sexy guy, which was the picture her online boyfriend had provided, inside the car was a huge, mean guy with a gun who said to her, either get in the car or I will kill you. 
she became a trafficking victim. Three, make sure your statistics are accurate and you have used credible sources and make sure you understand the context for that stat. If you paraphrase or rewrite what you read, you can make mistakes. Here are two common examples. This is correct. Human trafficking is the fastest growing illegal enterprise. This is incorrect. Human trafficking is the fastest growing crime. The fastest growing crime in the US is identity theft, not human trafficking. This is correct. Close to 70% of victims are from the foster care system. This is incorrect. Close to 70% of foster children are victims of human trafficking. Can you hear the difference? It's subtle, but significant. Four, be careful of promoting stories from questionable sources. People make money getting clicks on their site, so they send out sensational stories, which is called clickbait, like claiming Wayfair and Mother Teresa were engaged in human trafficking. Neither story was true. Promoting false sensational stories will kill your credibility as a speaker, and people won't believe the true stories you do share. Before you share anything, Google, is such and such true? Five, engage by asking questions. It keeps people awake. For example, during a teen talk, ask them why they think human traffickers target teens. After they have told you their answers say, that is all right on. In addition, then you add the points you need to make. Keep your talk interactive rather than just talking at them. Number six, it is important to understand the distinction of speaking for versus speaking against. For example, Martin Luther King Jr. spoke for freedom. Speaking for means focusing on solutions, not on how bad your social justice issue is or that people don't care, etc. Mostly focusing on the problem will leave your audience discouraged and discouraged people tend not to act. Seven, make sure you create the sense for people that we can win. Tell stories and give examples of people or organizations who have made a big impact. This gives your audience hope. Every one of our presentations at this channel focuses on actions and solutions. Eight, make sure you keep it moving. Bottom line your points. If they want to know more detail, they will ask questions during the question and answer period. If you provide too much detail, you will put them asleep. People who are passionate make the best speakers, but they tend to oversell their points. You only need one or two examples of each point. You can lose your audience by over explaining. Nine, be bold. Wimpy is boring. Criminals are bold. We need to be bolder. Don't be afraid to let people know that the only thing that will make a difference as a result of them being there that day is to take action. 10. Complete your talk with your audience by focusing on the one thing they will do. Stop 15 minutes before the end and set it up like this. I am available to answer any questions you have after we complete. However, now we come to the part that will make the difference as a result of you being here today, which is what will you do? First, provide examples to stimulate their thinking, something like this. Will you go home and share with your children? How about organizing a drive at your church for a nonprofit? Then you have them do paired sharing where they tell each other the one thing they will do. After the paired sharing, invite people in the audience to share what they will do. If you do paired sharing first, I promise you they will share for this part. If no one raises their hand, just wait and keep smiling. They will start. <clears throat> Number 11, last but not least, your last statement needs to create urgency. If you don't create urgency at the very end of your talk, 
then people will go home and think about it and then focus on something else and forget about what they were going to do. So at the end, say something so people get that they need to act now. It could be something like either the human traffickers, the gangs, or the pornographers are going to intervene in the lives of our children or we will. Please mark your calendars to take action this week on the one thing you said you would do. To end any social justice issue, we need to mobilize the community. When we reach a critical mass of people taking action, we will win. I highly recommend that you watch our presentation on how to motivate groups to take action. It delves more deeply into the dynamics of how to powerfully inspire people to get to work. The second video in this series addresses how to market yourself as a social justice speaker. To access the PowerPoint that goes with this video, you just go to my website and you can find it. Please do subscribe to this channel and like and share this video. Thank you for watching.